Yeah. How often do people, yeah. and especially young people, think that because they know everything, yeah. they think they know it all, then they are the center of their own universe, their own world. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis. And today in the podcast booth is Steve and Mary Alessi. Here we are again. Give it up for Mary. Wow, the crowd wars. We got our Alessi, uh, our family business um, mugs, coffee mugs before us because we're going to act like we're sitting on the patio discussing Just family. Having a good conversation. You know, Mary, the reason we have this podcast is because family really is everybody's business. Yeah. You know what we mean by that? It's, you know, if you don't make it your business now, yeah. whether it's at home or whether it's in your workplace where your family business people and their family work together, if you don't make it your business now, you'll have to make it business later. Right. Everybody will find out about your family's business yeah. <laughs> if you're not taking care yeah, of your business. So, so true. we're going to be looking at something today that... Uh, has three different kinds of thoughts, and and we'll go with this one. One thought really hit you this week, and um, it was a powerful thought. And I'd love for us to be able to hammer this out because it works for us because we are a multi generational ministry mm -hmm. church, and we are at a place where we're working with our younger, our young adult kids. So. It also can work at home, though, because parents may pick up on on some things. So there's the, what, what I'd like to just label this, if we can, is, is just go from the standpoint of the misleading voices mm -hmm. that we allow to help us or hurt us right. with decisions right. that we make about dealing with our family. Now, we usually don't start a podcast in a Bible, with a Bible verse, but there's one that I think goes in line. With this, and it's it's an old proverb actually, and it's found. It says, "Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when they were are old, they will not depart from it." So, let's think in terms of what this would look like. What our responsibility is to train up our next generation in the way they should go. So. Tell us about this thought that was running around your brain. So I, you know, working with young adults, and whether you're working with them or they're just at the house and you're trying to have harmony and be together, this thought that I have had over and over again is, I don't want to get in the way. I don't want to be in the way. I don't want to be an obstruction of any creative ideas that they have. I don't want them to feel like they've got to get past me. I don't want to ever be a hurdle. I want them to you know, exercise their gifts and their talents. And at the same time, I would like to be to them, you know, what maybe I didn't have in my life. Mm -hmm. And so fighting back the thoughts constantly of, I don't want to be in the way. And every little conflict. So if me or Gabby were, would have a little moment, I would go there in my mind, am I in the way? Or Stephanie, if, if she was singing and I knew I had to come up, does she feel like I'm in the way? Would she rather I not? And all those thoughts that... Mm -hmm are really misleading, like you said, but they don't lead to anything fruitful. And so I was driving down the road and I, this thought came to me, I am not in the way, but as someone who's way down the road of doing exactly what they're doing now, who have attained a lot of wisdom, I'm not in the way, I'm in the way. Mm -hmm. So train them up in the way. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking, I'm an obstruction, I'm an annoyance. Oh, here comes mom again. Yeah. No, and I'm You're not. You're the instruction. <laughs> I am the instructor yeah. to some degree. Mm -hmm. So I am I get to help be a voice in their lives, life of authority and know-how yeah. and help them avoid pitfalls. And there are some pitfalls I'm not going to be able to help them avoid. They're going to learn that on their own. But to be an encouragement along the way mm -hmm. of life and learning, I've earned these gray hairs. You know, people don't change a whole lot. They change some, but not much. And we've been down that road and we can help. So in in order to not feel paralyzed and take myself out mm -hmm. in an area where they need me and really aren't thinking I'm in the way. The truth is that thought is in my head, not in theirs. Right, right. So without that conversation 
of how do I help you? How do I support you? How do I not irritate you? Because there's another scripture verse that says, don't provoke your kids to wrath. Right. Don't make your kids mad. But at the same time, when we're working together, I'm no different than a supervisor that they would knock on the door and say, can I get five minutes? Yeah. So I can't think, oh, I'm mom and I'm here and I'm in the way. No, I'm in the way. And if you'll follow my way yep. in these areas, yes. it's going to help you tremendously. And the way you should go. And the way you should go. Can you imagine a school professor right. thinking to themselves, I'm in the way? Yeah. No, no, that's ridiculous. The school professor knows they have experienced some things. They also studied some things, right. learned some things, and their role is to train up these students in the classroom because yeah. he is in the way. That that instructor is in the way. He he knows the way to go, so therefore he can show this show next the generation right. the way to go. But parents will have that thought. They'll oh, look yeah. at their kids and think, wow, my kids are just so much smarter than me. They have better education. Uh, they're, they're so much wittier. They're funny. Uh, I guess I'm just in the way. Right. No, mom and dad, you are in the way. You're in the right way. <laughs> you have way. a lot to offer. You have a lot to teach them yes. and to show them. Yes. I, I found something this week. I thought it was really interesting, Mary. It says, the ancient Greek philosopher, I'm going to try to mention his name, Anna. Anaximander, oh, yeah, 610 to 546 BC, right? He made the first map of the known world. Wow. He depicted the city of Miletius mm -hmm. at the center of the whole world. <laughs> Why? Because that's where he lived. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How often do people, yeah. and especially young people, think that because they know everything, yeah. they think they know it all, then they are the center of their own universe, their own world. Yeah. And a parent can feed into that by thinking, well, I'm in the way. Let me stay out of the way. Yeah. Let me leave them to their own. And you can't leave them to their own because you have to step up and lead them right. to the place that will eventually be the way for them. And a parent has a good, deep, uh, a good beat on that. They Absolutely. Know. They know. You know, I think that it's, you never stop being a parent. They have one mom and they've got one dad. And if you vacate that role because you talk yourself out of it and you sit down and you decide, I'm not going to be the one because my kids won't listen to me and you believe all that, then you you really forfeit an incredible opportunity to be not just a friend because it's hard to be friends with your kids. You can be, but that's not the best relationship that you offer them. The best relationship that you offer them is a sought-out advisor. I want to go ask mom what she thinks. I'm going to go ask dad what he thinks. And it does take some work to get there and some getting through some conflicts, climbing mm -hmm. mountains, and getting over some landmines. But it's worth it because it's what your kids need. And I go back to when I thought when I go to have that thought, and what's helped me overcome that thought just recently is where was I at their age? What would have helped me? Well, not a parent figure, because sometimes you can work with people that are parent figures and their style is wrong. You know, they're just, they're, they bark at you. But if I could be an advocate for them and let them know they're going to make mistakes, what would I have loved? What would have inspired me that I would sit here today and say, this person, and I would name them by name, taught me everything I know with grace, with patience, because they did not see themselves in the way. They saw that they could offer a gift to me of showing me the way, and they're my greatest inspiration. How do we get there? Mm. How do we become that person? And and really, for for me, I'm that's a work in progress because you know all of us are together a lot, and we're making decisions together a lot. We're going to make mistakes, right? But to see that picture, and I I liken it to when we go to Israel. We'd love to go to Israel. One of the reasons we like to go back and take new people is because we love to see their their expressions. You know, you're standing in Golgotha. You're standing at, uh, you know, Gethsemane. You're, you're in the garden. You're, you're, it, I mean, it goes on and on and on, the experiences you have. Well, you don't look at the people who are standing there for the first time crying, going, oh yeah, I saw this. Yeah, I was here. Yeah, I cried too. You don't, you know, that, right. that's annoying. Right, right. You stand there and watch them have this experience 
And it should thrill you to see other people have this experience. And I kind of compare that to helping the next generation go through these experiences. But sometimes we can just be annoying older people mm-hmm. and, and shame them. Yeah, I know. I wa- You think that was hard? What we did was harder. We didn't have computers, you know. And there's some funny times you can share that. But I think it's important for us to respect the generation that they are in that is different than yours. Um, but l- but when they have their failures, don't shame them for the failure. Just say, listen, I was there too. There's no new evils. There's no new mistakes. It's all the same. You're going to be all right. But when something good happens to them, instead of feeling you've got to compete with that, just stand back and watch them enjoy that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just some, you know, important give and takes in that to make that relationship really the best that it can be. I love our South Florida community because of the Latin influence, many of which have come from uh, countries that have moved towards socialism and even communism. Yeah. And their parents have escaped that and brought these kids over to our country. Now, I love our South Florida community because this generation, the younger generation, that has benefited from the sacrifice of the parent shows such beautiful honor. Yes. Um, there, there's that that whole honor of the papa and the, the the mother, the grandmother, the what they have gave up in order for these kids to get what they yes. have today. Substantial. It's beautiful. That honor is shown. So, you know, for a parent who thinks they're in the way right. uh, of, of their kids' advancement, their kids' growth, whatever they may may look like, maybe it's a matter of your kid learning some honor. Right. Teaching them how to honor That's what right. the parents have gone through before them. And because they paid the price, they deserve, they, they've they earned the right to be able to tell a, a young person, this is the way you go. Yeah, because I know Follow the way. Me. I've we been know the, the way. I've been that way. You got to listen to me. You need to listen. We, we've got something going on, you know, with the news channels you hear about... Uh, eruptions in certain cities taking place and recently it happened in Atlanta and they said a um an antifa group came in and it was really those that came in and threw cock- molotov cough- cocktails molotov cocktails at the stores to blow yeah. up you know establishments uh light cop cars on fire it's terrible um just cause havoc in the street, a little rioting in the street evening, and and then pointing the finger at the police for being there and being hard on them. You know, they they went back and they found where about six to eight of these people came from, and all of them were out of town. All and of one them. of them they mentioned, and this is how this generation, you can't trust them all the time. You got to help them. <laughs> because one of them came from a very affluent family and has, I mean, affluent. Wow. Comes down and now is slamming, you know, businesses, breaking windows, rioting, rioting, yeah. just coming in and 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 I've thought to myself, you know, they they want to point the finger at capitalism in America. Well, how could you do that? You know, these capitalistic pigs, and they're going after police for not, you know, for being police for right. providing authority. protection yeah. and authority. They want to go after all that, and I thought to myself, man. You know, this young person has the financial resources mm. to be able to come down to a city, all right, evidently, and, and do what he's done, certain liberties. Oh, he comes from wealth. Right. Has he forgotten what his parents had to pay for sacrifice mm. in order to have that kind of wealth that he gets to enjoy? And right. now he's going to go out and be a hypocrite and, and complain about others that have privileges yeah. in life or perceived privileges. So entitled. Uh, going against capitalism yeah. in its finest, which is r- uh, businesses being run to benefit a community. Are you kidding? I know. Here's the point. Somebody never said to that kid, hey, man, you know what? You're in the way. Yeah. Right. That mindset of yours, let yeah. me adjust that. Yes. I'm not in the way. You're not going to usurp my authority as a parent. You better follow me because I know where I'm going. That's right. We need more than ever, Mary, to realize, yes, I am in the way. Yeah. I, yes. I'm doing it right. I'm in the right I way. I might have made some mistakes because I, I know a lot of parents are like, well, yeah. I divorced. I didn't. They disqualify didn't themselves. They feel the, no, 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 no. They can't. Use they can't. your wisdom. Use your, your authority. You Use your experience to be able to say, hey. Follow me, man. I know what I'm doing. And if you don't, there's going to be some consequences here. I, you know, I have to add one more point to this because what 
parents need to understand more than ever. And we work with a lot of young adults, which is why we and people and families in our church. So we hear it all and we see it all. And the problem with sending your kids out into the world without your oversight and being there as an advocate and an advisor, the problem with it is it's not like it was in the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s. It's a different world now. There is a world that is set on brainwashing our young people to have a new mindset. So going away to university and getting a full ride or having these experiences that you're so proud of as a parent are most likely the wrong way. Mm. Today, they're the wrong way yeah. because you're not going to get your kid back. Even the strongest kid today, I'm talking about right now today, freshman in college, it is a different agenda than it was even five, 10 years ago. And parents more than ever need to get this mindset that nobody's going to teach your kids like you are. Nobody's going to love them like you are. Nobody's going to to honor them and respect mm-hmm. them like you are because the secular environment right now has an agenda to turn the hearts and minds of the next generation away from our traditions and what we grew up with, away from our mentality of freedoms, the way of our mentality of the way the world works. And they're determined in those universities to change their mind. Brainwash, public schools too. So we have to more than ever now, this is really an urgent message. We, We started it off by saying, don't think you're in your kid's way and all that. But the truth is, you parents need to definitely step into this truth and start seeing themselves as I'm the, if I do this, I'm going to hold back my kids' dreams. You're not going to hold back their dreams. You're going to lead them in the way that they should go. Hmm. And it's more urgent than ever. I, I believe, I know we've yeah. talked about this. Yeah. It's I, a difficult I agree. time. I agree. I think the way we come at it is this. If a parent does send their kid off to a college like that, we've heard a lot of parents say when their kids come back four or five years later after college, man, my kid changed. I don't even know him anymore. Who is this person? Who, yeah. Who are That's they, what we've heard. Right? So the thought should be, if you are sending them off, uh, we have a family in our church that sent their young daughter to New York, and she's in the arts. If she, if they, Since they've sent her off, I mean, she's already been told, what, you talk to the mom, she's already been told by some in her dance class and so forth to that keep her your Christianity to yourself. To yeah. yourself. Right. Don't bring it up here, and, you know, you're... Um, um, my, my thought there is if you're going to send them off, then don't just release them on their own. Right. You better work now overtime to yes. stay engaged. That's right. Don't leave them out for too long. Bring no. them home. Yeah. Get them home on the weekend. Yes. But the intentionality of that is to say, I want you to go get the best education you can in that environment. Mm. If that environment means, you know, it's away from school, from the house, and you're in a different city, and the city is like a New York or, you know, a a New Orleans or a city that's just out there party that's got a lot more influences that are more carnal, yes, uh, that may pull them away from their Christian values, then what you have to do as a mom and dad say is, I better insert myself more into their life. Right. Let me get them on the phone. Let me check with them every day. What's going on? Yeah, because the secular world will be happy to teach them the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't don't you know? Tell them. Send me a picture yeah. of your friends. Who are you hanging out with today? Don't let mom and dad. You don't have to go look on their social media page. You shouldn't yeah. go look on their social media page to see who their friendship circle is. Right. Not out there. No. Insert yourself into yes. that circle. Yes. When you go out to visit them, say, hey, man, let's hang out. Let me see who's influencing you. Let's go to dinner. Take them all out together. Insert yourself more into their world. Just don't pull back and think, I'm in the way. Right. Let them enjoy this yes. season. In my day, it was like, okay, Steve, you go sow your wild oats. You know, right. Back then, they said, every, every young man has to go out and sow his wild oats. Hey, sowing your wild oats then and sowing wild it's not oats the today same. It's is not, not the, the same. same. It is not the same. Th- those are some big oats. No, there's some. They're going to come back and cause some real heartache. So you're not in the way. That's right. You're in the way. Yes. Stay there, mom and dad. That's right. When it comes to working with them in business, remember, you started the business. You're not in the way. They may have better ideas or seemingly newer ideas. But you've seen some ideas proven. You want to stay with what's in your gut. That's if, right. If uh, you're a, a religious leader that's leading a, a organization, you're working with your family, I would say, man, go with your gut. Yeah. I, I got a pastor friend of mine, for real, Mary, 
He was telling me about his son, and his son was probably in his late to mid, mid to late 30s. And when I was talking to him on the phone, he was telling me all about his son taking over, having this going on, that going on. And I, I wish I would have had this verbiage mm -hmm. uh, of being in the way because he was feeling like this guy, strong leader, okay? But he backed down a little because he thought his son was prepared. Mm. And I told him, man, don't do that. No. Don't vacate your place just yet. You, yet. Your role can't be replaced. No. For one thing, your son is going to need you there. Of all the voices that he's going to be listening to now that he's a young man and he's made some uh, money in his own endeavor, and now you're bringing him over into the ministry, please don't think that just because he succeeded in business means it's a slam dunk he's going to succeed in the ministry. No. This is your business. You That's know right. ministry. You know what it's taken to get to this place that now you're going to hand the baton to him in the future. But don't remove yourself from the equation. You're needed, your wisdom, your experience. Yes. He's actually, talk about way, he, he's the wake. Right. Uh, the wake of the boat when it pulls the skier, or you can get behind a boat, and because of its wake, you could put a surfboard back there and actually surf on the wake. The, the mom and dad are the wake. Yes. The, the vehicle that's causing the wake that now the kids are able to get into. And yes, one day after they're proven, when they are in the way right. that you've helped raise them in, they'll then <laughs> they'll be yeah. able to move into that season of life where they will not depart from yeah. the way that you help them establish. So stay in the way. Yep. I'd, I'd like to be the person that my kids name when they say who's inspired you to live the life you've lived. I would love for it to be our parents. Mm. They weren't ever in the way, but they taught us in the way. And we hear constantly from people in our circles, well, we have, we've heard this, you got to get out of the way, got to get out of the way, don't block them, they're going to learn, they're going to learn. And yes, that's true. But you know, the truth is, life is hard enough when you're trying to learn how to do things without somebody that's on your team helping you or saying, here's the way, walk you in it with your own gifts and your own talents and your, your abilities. But what, what an incredible opportunity. It's not one way or the other. Can't we be a team in this where I'm, I understand it's important for me to, to back up and let you learn and experience, but with some knowledge along the way to say, but you know what? You should probably step here, step there, maybe step over here. This is what will lead you to a place in the end that you're going to be so satisfied and avoid the pitfalls that we've had to walk through. Yes, there are some things you're not going to be able to teach your kids, and that's okay. We're not talking about being helicopter parents or, be, you know, don't leave me behind. I want to be a part of your life all the time. That's an extreme toxic, which we've done podcasts on, and go back and listen to that. We're talking about when you're in your child's life or you're in your young adult's life or you're working together, don't let that mentality where it's in your head. It's not, it's not something they're saying to you. It's something that is like one of those worm, brain worms or whatever they call that, earworms, that you start feeling like you're insignificant in their lives. Refuse to hear that voice because you can be and will be the greatest source of inspiration, direction, teacher, leader, friend, advocate, and what a blessing to be able to be that. Mm, to your kids. Yeah, we need that more than ever. We do. I, I love that when we work with our kids, there's certain things that Christopher and the family, Steph, Lauren, Gabby, bring to the table. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Social media, you know, they bring to the table information that I'm not aware of. Right. Uh, I have to depend on some of that, that their young minds are a little bit more uh, aware of. They've learned. That's their younger generation. So there's things that they do bring to the table that as the leader and even around the house as the father, I sit back and think, yeah, that's good. I can learn from them. Oh my gosh. In those, yes. In that arena. Yes. You know, musically speaking, I were talking to Alan Paul yesterday and John and, you know, that young mind of a little Timothy, a young Timothy that comes along and he has ideas he understands certain things. His brain's picking up on stems and how to right. do this, that, and the other. And you guys are like, yeah, we need that. We do. We need we the need young, young fresh brain. There's a contribution that yeah. they make. Right. We want to welcome the contribution. Thank God for their contribution. Yes. But their contribution should never make us feel 
like we are no longer uh, valuable and shouldn't be in the equation. No. We're, we we have things we got to teach them, too. It's a good mix, a good balance. And in, there's, I think, two or three pack podcasts. Alan, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there's more. Where Stephanie and I talk about our songwriting process together. You can go listen to that. Because we've had to learn to find harmony. And what's so amazing is, now that we've been writing together for several years, she will lean into my lyrics, and I lean into her more modern melodies. Mm. Because my sound is my sound from when I learned. Her sound is more current, it's more modern. And so I back up and I'll say, "You, what melody should this be? And what's so amazing about that is that it's such a good relationship of give and take that she'll lean sometimes into an old style melody because she likes the way it feels. And mm-hmm. I'll lean into more of a modern melody and we'll be fighting over the opposite. Yeah. No, but I like it because it's more modern. <laughs> no, I like it because it's old school. But part of that is I've had to get out of my own head yeah. And she's had to too. But I'm the grown up in the room at this point. I'm I'm the one that has the experience. I have the years and I can control myself and control my thoughts and constantly say I she doesn't want me to leave this room. She doesn't wish that it was just young people her peers. She doesn't wish that I would just leave. And those that's some real honest open That's where it started, Mary. That's where when it the starts. When the two of you started writing, you felt some of those things. Cuz you you can easily She put that off. <laughs> she kind of did. Well, I was misinterpreting what she was putting off. Mm. She was feeling like, I, I'm not as seasoned as you, mom, and I can't, I don't know what your expectation of me is, so this would just be easier if you weren't in the room. Well, then when we learned for me to express myself and for her to express herself, we were able to reach this beautiful place where writing together, we have a songwriting session come up this week. I cannot wait to get in the room with her because our, we just have this ability to write together, but we've worked for it. Mm. It didn't just happen. And yeah. I, I would say that if you fall prey into that trap of, yeah, but you don't know my son or you don't know my daughter and the difficulty, it's just too much. We're too much alike. We're, you have to work for that, just like a marriage. You have, to, you have to get through the difficult times and be determined. First and foremost, what can I control? I can control what I think about myself. And I'm not going to project onto my son or my daughter what they might may or may not be thinking. And just keep processing. I am not in the way. Mm-hmm. I am in the way. Remember, it says train up a child. That's right. Train them up so they get in the way. Help them. All right. That means, I mean, no trainer who is training some an athlete no. thinks to themselves, I'm in the way. No. And they surely don't let up on them. They don't let things go unaddressed. If the golf swing is wrong, the trainer says, nope, let's adjust this. That's right. And the the, the athlete says, all right, I may have power. I, I may have skill. I'm younger than he that trainer is, and I may be better at golf, but he's had some experience. He's making me better. Yes. The train, the trainer has to come out and in, in our mindset of, okay, I'm here. I'm I'm showing them the way. So yes, you and Stephanie had to get in the gym, you had to train, you had to work out some of those areas that you were dealing with so that the two of you come to the table now and you both feel like there's this beautiful, respectful synergy that is taking place. Just for our overall uh, culture of our church, Mary, Yeah, we always want this to be the case. Yeah. We want the older, more seasoned, mature, experienced leaders, staff members in their role, uh, playing their role. Yeah. And they never make us feel like we're in the way. No. We depend on them to know what they need to do, do their job, do it effectively so that we're better together. Why does it change with our kids when we work with them or in the home? And but and I think it's, it starts in our heads. It starts in our head, but we have to stay in trainer's right. mode. No, I, I work it. that out. That's right. I exercise that thought out. I I take it captive. I yeah. don't let it lead me. I don't let it form this opinion in my mind that maybe my kid isn't even thinking. 
or or we build it up in our mind and now we're mad and tell your and, husband about it and now then we, we have, have a prayer meeting we know but then we go back <laughs> in the office and we do a power grab or we do a power grab on the weekend on the platform this pastors do this who do they think they are i'll show them they're not going to do this to me and then we have these silent fights right that are people your kids are like what's going on what what are you mad at i don't understand and then we frustrate them so just like a teacher, leader, trainer wouldn't default to power grabbing and a parental mantle or style and approach, we have to manage that and control that too. We're not trying to control our kids. We're trying to come along and help them avoid some things and work together as a team. Mm-hmm. I don't know everything, but I can promise you when it comes to certain things, we know more than the, than the previous than the generation coming. Yeah. There's things we know. And you know, they don't begrudge us that. They know we know. There's things about this phone, like you were talking about Timothy. I got a I got a new watch. Oh my gosh, there's like three things on it that I know how to do. And there's there must be what Ashley four thousand <laughs> features to this, to this. I've had to hand it over to Ashley. I don't know how many times to say, "Will you fix it? Will you fix it? Will you fix it?" A series going right now. Shut up, Siri, because um, I, I touched it. <laughs> but that those are things they know. But when it comes to life application and pitfalls in relationship, we've got to position ourselves in our kids' lives and in our young adults' lives where we are not best friends, but we're counselors, we're helpers, we are supporters, we're cheerleaders, but we're also shepherds. Mm. And we know the way because we've been the way and we can help them. What a blessing. I wish I had had that. I had that on some level, but not to the degree I'm ready to offer that to our kids, to our younger staff. Yeah. It's a beautiful gift. It's a gift and, and it has to be intentional. Yes. The parent has to be intentional right. about it and not dismiss that you're in the way. Because you're not. Your kids need you in the oh. way. <laughs> they do. Yes. So, all right, Mayor. We had a couple others we were going to talk about, like, I want to be my kid's best friend, uh-uh. but we won't hit that now. And the other no. is what I was thinking here that uh, I'm too hard on my kids. Yeah. Yeah. Those are thoughts that we need to talk about on another podcast. Yeah, we'll save it for another one. There you go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed another edition of The Family Business with the Alessis. Mary and I sure have had a great time, and we don't want to be in the way, but we are in the way. (laughs) Take care. Hey there. If you enjoyed this episode of The Family Business Podcast with the Alessis, then you'll want to know we've got more insight, more encouragement, more great conversations that we can have on Sundays and even some surprises coming your way. So you want to make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch one of these next videos here next, because remember, family is everybody's business.